नमस्कार ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू रेस्पेक्टेड फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ऑफ टू ए एंड माई डियर स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स सो आई एम सपोज टू टॉक ऑन यूनिवर्सल ह्यूमन वेल्यूज यूनिवर्सल ह्यूमन वेल्यूज what is universal which is not confined to a particular region which is not confined to any nation which is not even confined to any age which is not local which is not temporal so the values which are confined to a particular nation cannot be called as universal so universal values has to be has to be values for the whole of humanity so universal first we have to understand what is universal universal as against national universal means eternal eternal it's not temporal it's valid for all ages for all countries for the whole of humanity it's not confined to a particular state particular nation or for a particular particular group of people or or nation or society so this is what is called universal values it is valued throughout the world it is valued for the whole of humanity not confined to any particular nation there are so many values there are so many values but today i will concentrate on six values because in my opinion these six values are the summary of all values the six values are the summary of all values if you can pursue these six values then not only you will succeed these values will make you a man this is actually universal human values as well as pathways pathways to a successful life a perfected life these values are great great gates great gates for a great life great gates for a great life and it is easy to remember also if you if you remember two words very popular words one is supreme court and one is paying gifts both the words are very popular words from p you can derive two values from z you can derive two values from supreme court score you will derive one value and another from supreme s so first let us concentrate so these are not only values of universal values these are values for success these are values for perfection these are values for perfecting our personality so first value is values for success whatever you may call it values for perfection or universal values it is the courage from supreme court from c courage but what is courage there are many types of courage many types of courage what is courage so first one is physical courage physical courage what is physical courage physical courage is the sort of bravery sort of bravery sort of bravery in face of hardship in face of hardship whenever you face hardship in your life in your life as well as in the life of others so physical i can cite many example many example but just i will concentrate on the theories because i have to cover six values six values within one hour uh, one hour uh, uh, or a one hour in 15 minutes so first thing 
courage is bravery. Bravery in the face of hardship. Hardship of whom? Hardship means rich when you are at risk. Rich to yourself as well as rich to others. So this is the first physical courage. You have to show your bravery. Then emotional courage. You have to have emotional courage. What is that emotional courage? Emotional courage is you should rise above fear. You should rise above fear. And you need to inculcate compassion and empathy, not fear. Somebody is in a deplorable situation, somebody is at risk, your nearest and dearest one. You, you need not to be fearful. What you need to have compassion and empathy, not fear. So emotional courage means rising above fear, rising above fear and inculcating compassion and empathy. Compassion and empathy. Just I'm giving just one or two examples. Then number two, going outside of the comfort zone. Going outside of the comfort zone to help someone because you feel. You are feeling for someone. But you are living in a comfort zone. If you want to help him or her, then, then you have to go outside your comfort zone. Because you are in a very comfortable position. If you want to help somebody for whom you are feeling, then you have to you have to come, you have to come from that comfort zone, come out of that comfort zone. Because somebody may in that case may dislike you. Then you may lose something. In spite of that, despite all these things, you should have the courage. You should have the courage to go in outside the comfort zone to help someone for whom you are feeling. You are feeling. Another example of emotional courage. This I think with loved one but risky. So this is what is called emotional courage. You should have the courage to disagree even with your loved one. But of course, in a polite manner. Of course, in a polite way. Then it will be called emotional courage. Normally, normally, we do not disagree with our loved ones because my loved one will dislike me. But somebody is at risk. I am feeling for him. Even at the cost of disagree with my loved ones, I have to, I have to help him out, then it will be called emotional courage. So two types of courage. One is one is physical courage, then the next one is emotional courage. The third one is courage of the strong mind. Courage of the strong mind. What does it mean? Courage of the strong mind. What is mental courage? So far we have discussed physical courage as well as emotional courage. Disagree with loved ones. Going outside the comfort zone to help somebody for whom you are feeling. So what is mental courage? Mental courage is once you realize the right course of action, you have to realize that this is the right course of action. Then, if necessary, you have to oppose your friends or even bosses. If you have realized that, not arrogance, that this is the right action, I have realized, then you should have courage even to disagree to your boss. Disagree with your own friends, disagree with your bosses. Then it will be called mental courage, which often we don't have the courage to show because then I may be fired. I may be fired because I am coward. I don't have the courage. So what is called mental courage? Mental courage then is the ability, is the ability to oppose your own friends and bosses. 
for the right cause, for a cause which you have realized as, as the right action. For that, you should have the courage to oppose even your friends, even your own friends and, and bosses. Then it will be called mental courage. Then there is another courage, which is called social courage. Social courage. What is that courage? Each generation has people. Each generation has people who break all customs and established new norms. They are the same as it. They are the same as it. Do you have the courage? If necessary, you have to break the social custom. If it is necessary, necessary, not in a, not to be realized from the point of view, from the point of view of your own interest, but from the point of view of greater interest, you should have the courage to break social, social or old custom and, and rule. Then it will be called social courage. Social courage. So each generation has people who break old customs. Old customs and establish new norms. Then it will be called social courage. So these are in a sweet sort. We can classify courage so into physical courage, emotional courage, then mental courage, then social courage. Then another there is another courage, another courage, another form of courage. And what is that courage? Courage in your life. Courage in your life. I will I will put some questions before you for your own realization, for your own reflection. And this carries its answer. What is courage in life? What is courage in life? So the very questions carries along with them their answers. Have you helped someone in times of crisis? You are to you are to ask yourself. You are to ask yourself because this is I am discussing now courage in life. Courage in life. So have you helped someone in times of crisis? This is for you to reflect. Have you apologized? Have you apologized for your mistake and rectified your faults? Ever have you apologized for your fault? Just now, the director has said something to you. If you have done some mistake, mistake is not a crime. For me, mistake is not a crime. And you should have courage, you should have courage to apologize. You should have courage to apologize. This is what is courage. So courage for what? Have you apologized for your mistake and rectified your faults? <laughs> this is for you to reflect upon yourself. These are the, some examples of courage in life. Then, have you learned something new? Courage also means learning something new. But by how? By overcoming a fear. Overcoming a fear, like driving, like driving, swimming. I have a fear. I do not want to swim. I do not want to learn swim. Because I don't have the courage. I don't have the courage. So you want to overcome your courage. Have you ever, have you ever learned something new by overcoming your fear? So these are some examples of courage in your life courage in your life. Then, have you stood up for something? Have you ever stood up for something you felt was right? You have felt that it is right. Have you ever stood up for that right cause? These are some examples of courage in life. Courage in life. Then, what is the essence of courage then? Now I am coming to the theory also. What is then essence of courage? 
What is called Haris? As I am supposed to talk on universal human values. These are not confined to India. These are not confined to only students of Dewey. If it is, if this, this things, if these values, if this value, this value of courage is confined to, confined to students of Dewey only, then it will not be called universal human values. Then it will be sectarian, it will be local values. Because this is, this is applicable for all ages, for all countries irrespective of time for the whole humanity. For the whole humanity. That is why these are called universal human values. So then, what is the essence of courage? What is the essence of courage? If you are, after going through all these examples and classifications, after discussing all these classifications, if you are asked, please tell me the essence of courage. What? What does courage actually mean? What does courage actually mean? What is courage? But first, there is a caution, there is, there is a warning. Let us never mistake courage. Let us never, let us never mistake courage for daring, rashness, or so on. So of is not courage. So of is not courage. Dearness is not courage. Rustness is not courage. Suppose you have seen a, 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 a car is running on a particular road at 90 km per hour speed. You are a crazy as boy, so you want to cross over the road while, while, while that car is car is car is running on the road then it will not be called car is then it will be called rashness in Assamese it will be called Kothokarita it is not car is it is rashness it is foolishness it is not it's not car is car is is prevalent car is is prevalent so this is not the essence of car is so of rashness so of rashness daring is not is not is not courage. So you have also to be guided by rationality, reasonable knowledge. You cannot touch a, a electric connection while electricity is on. If you touch a particular electric point when the switch is on, then it will be called rashness. It will be called daring. It will be called so. It is not courage. Why? Because courage is something noble and beautiful. Courage is something noble and beautiful. Courage is something noble and beautiful. Then what is courage? Mother says, who is mother? She is the spiritual collaborator of Sri Aurobindo. And who is Sri Aurobindo? I am not going to explain. You just search on Google, you will find. You will find. So, mother, I am referring to the mother now. Mother's school. Who is mother? She is the spiritual collaborator of Sri Aurobindo, whom we regard as the incarnation of the Supreme Divine Mother. So, mother says, courage is a sign. Courage is a sign of soul's nobility. Atmar Abhijatya. Courage is a courage, courage is a sign of soul's nobility. Courage is not rashness. Courage is not daring. Courage is not so. Courage is prevalent. Courage is nobility. Courage is beautiful. Courage is courage is courage is noble and beautiful. Courage is soul's nobility. And then in one sentence, if you are asked, what is courage? Courage is the total absence of fear. What does that courage mean? Courage is the total absence of fear. Courage means total absence, not partial absence. Courage is total absence of fear in any form, in any form. Courage means total absence of fear in any form. Then what then is courage? 
So what that is courage. So courage in its deepest sense is to be able to face everything. Is to be able to face everything. Everything in life. Everything in life. From the smallest to the greatest thing. From the smallest to the greatest thing. From material things to those of spirit. Everything, everything. Without a sudden, without a sudden means without trembling, opening the tongue. Without a sudden, without trembling. This is what is called courage. Without the heart beginning to beat faster. When you are doing something, without your heart beginning to beat faster, then it is called courage. So courage is the total absence of fear in any form. There cannot be shudder in your body. There cannot be trembling in your body. So, then, how we can inculcate courage? There are runs. There are runs on the level of courage. How for Jehovah as a girl, stay as a run the home, run. Runs on the ladder of courage. Runs means the footings where we keep our foot in a ladder. This is what is called run, R-U-N-Z, run. So, runs on the ladder of courage. You may call it step. Steps of courage. Steps on the ladder of courage. How we can develop courage? What are the steps? First step is courage for oneself when one is in danger. You are pretty down here. Courage for oneself when one is in danger. Courage shown for those who are close to us. Courage for someone who are close to us. Second round. Third round. Courage shown for the sake of a complete stranger. He is not known to me. He is a stranger. But he is in danger. You are to show your courage. This is the third thing. First, first, when you are in danger. Next one is when your nearest and dearest are in danger. And then courage for a stranger when he is in danger. And number four, fourth step. Fourth step is courage shown for the sake of one's motherland. Like our markets. Courage for courage shown for the sake of one's motherland or a larger community. Then, a continuous courage with determination to succeed. Succeed against what? Succeed against handicap, adversity, etc. Suppose you have, you, have, you have a particular adversity, you have a particular handicap. If you are courageous, you will overcome that handicap. And if you are not courageous, out of fear, you will not even try. You will, you will not even make any effort. So, courage to succeed against handicap, against handicap and adversity being faced by you. So, you should have the courage. Suppose, suppose a particular speaker, he knows many things, but he has some sort of fear. I may forget why I will be when I will be standing in standing in front of podium, I will perhaps I will forget. This is a fear. It is his weakness. It is his handicap. You have to overcome. You should have the courage. You should have the courage. And then the noblest courage to recognize one's own. This is the highest form of courage. To recognize our own fault. Why we cannot recognize our fault? Because in essence we are coward. Very few are courageous. Who are courageous? Only those who are courageous can 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 recognize their own faults. So this is the highest form of courage to recognize our own fault. And then to correct one's mistake. Not only recognition is not sufficient, 
we have to we have to correct our mistakes. We have to correct our mistakes, and then the highest, highest, highest of all, highest of all, courage to be always truthful. We are seldom truthful. Out of fear, we do not speak the truth because. I have to lose something. And that is why, what is the definition of courage? Total absence of fear. If fear is still influencing you, if fear is still, still driving you, leading you, then you are not courageous. So the highest form, highest form of, highest form of courage is courage to be always truthful, courage to stay on the right path even if the whole world is against you. Even if the whole world is against you. This is what is called true heroism. So courage ultimately transformed into heroism. This is what is called true heroism. So courage to stand, if necessary, against the whole world. But not to be arrogant. Courage for the sake of truth. Courage for the sake of truth. These are the seven plans I have just shown you. From, from, from courage to, from courage to, courage for oneself, to the courage for, courage to be always truthful. Courage to recognize our own all and courage to mistake our own thoughts. And this is now the second day. Second value, second universal value. The great gains, the great gain for great time. A lose for success, a lose for perfection, a lose for perfected personality, whatever, whatever way you may like to call it. Second one is generosity. Generosity. What is generosity? In Assam is called Kodanyata, Udarata, Dhan, Kilata, Odaicho. Generosity. But what is generosity? What is generosity? What is generosity? And don't mistake one thing. Whatever I am speaking here, I am not an original thinker. Neither am I a scholar, nor do I possess any scholars. Then why is audacity on my heart? I have a sense of I have a sense of surrendering anything and everything at the lotus feet of the Supreme Divine Mother. And this sense of surrendering before the lotus feet of the Supreme Divine Mother is the sole source of my strength and audacity. I am not an original thinker. This lecture. These, these words have been taken from the writings of Swami Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo, his spiritual collaborator, the mother, and from the writings of their, of their disciples. Writing from, writings from their disciples. The way, the way or the base of my ability, how I can, how I have understood, I have just presented before you. So these are not my original thinker, thinking. These are derived, these are prepared from the writings of great spiritual personality. Great spiritual personality of our great mother. These are not my words. Only the presentation is my own. So how to be generous? How to be generous? First, let us discuss the ways. How one can be generous? And if we are not generous, then what are we? Then we are narrow. Then we are narrow. Then we are contracting ourselves. And Vivekananda says, expansion is life. Contraction is death. Death is nothing but contraction. And what is life? Life is expansion. You have to become, you have to become as fast as and all of you, I suppose, want to be great men in your life. I suppose all of you want to be happy in your life. If, but if somebody asks you, 
if in particular interview, if you are asked, what is your plan? Please tell me. Please speak few words about your plan. It's fine. You want to be happy man. It's fine. You want to be great man. Fine. You want to be successful man. Fine. But what is your plan? What is your plan? If somebody asks you, what would be your answer? Now you will be in a position to answer. Yes, I am trying to inculcate. I am trying to inculcate the the values or the principle of courage. Then I am I am inculcating the principle of generosity. At least now you are in a position to face your interviewers. So be generous with gifts, clothes, food, etc. From the lowest. How one can be generous? From be generous with gifts, clothes, food, etc. Then share your knowledge, ideas, and skills liberally. If we are mentally miser, we do not normally share our knowledge, our skill with our even with our close friends because of our own self-interest, because this is a world of competition. Then you will not be called generous. So you should have the courage, you should have inner attitude to share your knowledge, ideas and skills, liberally, liberally, with your loved ones, if necessary. Then help classmates. Help classmates. Juniors, school children in your area, etc. This is some runs or some steps how one can be generous. Then be generous with words of praise, encouragement, etc. When if your friend has succeeded in a particular competition, you should be generous in praising him. If we are miser, we can't appreciate him or her. This is narrowness, and narrowness is dead. Expansion is life. Expansion is life. So be generous with words of praise, encouragement, etc. Appreciate others for their qualities, etc. You should, you should always appreciate others for their qualities. Desire the pathways to become generous. Then be generous in thought. What is the meaning of being generous in thought? What does it mean? Forgive easily. Forgive others easily. Then you will be called generous. Forgive others easily. See positively. Always see things in a positive way. And forgive. Forgive. You should easily forgive others. You should easily forgive others. Then you will be called generous. Be generous with time. When someone needs you, normally now this is a busy world. If somebody, somebody is seeking my time, one hour, two hour, three hour, I always, we have always our own place. No, 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 I don't have time. I don't have time. I have long study. I have I have many words left. I can't give you my time. Even in phone, I can't attend a phone even for a second. Because I am narrow, because I have my child, because I have contracted my life. Then you are not called generous. So you should be generous with time when someone needs you. Because you have to donate your time to good causes and organization. You have to donate your time for good causes and for the good organization. Then, how one can develop generosity? How one can develop generosity? How one can develop generosity? So, practice generosity of thought. And what is the generosity of thought? I have already told you. That you should forgive others easily. Forgive others easily, you have to see things in a positive way. 
If we are arrogant, then we can't forgive others easily. Rather, we will take revenge. So taking revenge is not a sign of great man. It's it's almost it's almost asuri. It's almost asuri. Taking revenge. It's not manly. It's not caresias. It's not bravery. Taking revenge. So practice the velocity of thought, word, and action at every opportunity. Every opportunity. Give away things you like after using for some time. How you can practice? Suppose you are you like a particular pain very much. After using for some time, you give you donate it to donate it to your friend. It will develop your generosity. So practice generosity of thought, word, and action. It is a generosity of action. So at every opportunity, as for example, give away things you like after using for some time. Then be grateful for what you receive. Have you ever grateful? We all have two eyes. We can see the beautiful world. There are so many misfortunes in this world who can't see this beautiful world. Have we ever grateful for something? To, to something, somebody, for this? If I am not grateful, what I possess? Because there are many, many unfortunate in this world who are not possessing. But I am possessing. I have two hands. I have two feet. I have a beautiful physique. But there are many who, who do not. We have to be grateful. Do some authority, do some entity, do some being. And we cannot be, if we can't be grateful, we, if, if we can't be grateful, then we will be, we will be called narrow man, narrow, narrow, and narrowness is dead. It's narrowness is not the pathway to great and happy life. So then, be grateful for what you receive. Spend free. But of course there is a caution. Spend free, but within reason. Reasonably you should spend free, but within reason. Reason has to support you. Within reason. Not, not unreasonably. Not unreasonably, but you are to help. You are to spend reasonably. And this will develop develop the attitude of generosity in you. But I am again, I'm repeating, I'm repeating within, within the limit of reason. It must be reasonable. Then give more and expect less. Always try to give more and expect less. Then you will be generous. Then you will be generous. And understand more and criticize less. Always try to understand your brain. Criticize less. Criticize less, criticize less, criticize less and understand more. Understand more and criticize less. And let go things without bitterness. And what is the way? You you should be less critical of things. You should be less critical of things. So you should understand more. Criticize less. This is what is called generosity. This is what is called generosity. And let go things without bitterness. Without bitterness. And avoid the opposites. And what are those opposites? It is the greed and selfishness. Selfishness is the only sin in this world. There is no sin, no sin other than selfishness. Selfishness is the only sin, says Sri Aurobindo. Selfishness, meanness, these are the only sin. There is no other sin in this world. The source of all sin 
All vision is our own narrowness. We have to expand as fast as sky. When Vivekananda was addressing his main speech in Chicago in 1893, what happened, do you know? Many uttered just my words. Sisters and brothers of America, clappings continued for three to four minutes. Three to four minutes. And do you know what were the numbers of audience? 3,000 sitting, 4,000 standing. Why so much of response? Why so much of response? Because, because when he addressed, when he addressed sisters and brothers of America, he meant it. He meant it. It was not an intellectual clarity. Because if I go and in the same platform, if I if I stand before the podium to talk and address the sisters and brothers of America, I suppose I will not get that great that response. But Vivekananda got that response. The clapping continued. This is the historic moment for India. This is the only example, and you know that was his main lesson in life at the age of 30. India's first victory, first world victory, Chicago Empress, with this only five world sisters and brothers of America. And it was possible because of his, his skylight soul, skylight soul. So you have to expand yourself as fast as time, then you could also become a great man like, like Vivekananda. Because being great man is not, is not only the prerogative of Vivekananda. It is the prerogative for all of us. We can also become great, as great as Swami Vivekananda. So be grateful for what you receive Spend freely but within reason. Give more and expect less. Understand more and criticize less. Let go things without bitterness. Don't involve much. Let things go without bitterness. Avoid the opposite to return selfishness. So, with who? With who? Then the question comes. With who would you practice generosity? With who? You can practice generosity first with your family. Second, with your friends. Third, with your society. Fourth, with your country. And ultimately, with entire humanity. So, then, I am summarizing this, this gratitude, uh, uh, this, this principle, generosity. The generosity from case paying this past generosity. So what is then generosity? What is the essence of generosity then? Generosity to be generous is to be benevolent towards everyone. To be benevolent towards everyone. To be generous. But in what form? Is it only benevolence, economic benevolence? No. Mother says, this is mother's school, not mine. Mother says, not only materially, not only materially, but also in the heart. Not only materially. If you may not be generous materially, you may not have enough material, material possessions to, to, to be generous with others physically. No problem. You can be generous in your heart. So, to be generous is to be benevolent towards everyone, not only materially, but also in the heart and the mind. It means always to have good feelings towards all. So, what is generosity? A good feeling towards all. Good feelings towards all. And there is a very beautiful quotation from Father. What is generosity? I, I consider it to be the ultimate definition of generosity. 
If you, whether you will accept it or not, it's up to your wisdom. I am not imposing, I am just explaining. Mother says, generosity, generosity is to find one's own satisfaction. Is to find one's own satisfaction in the satisfaction of others, which we normally do not get satisfaction. When my brain is satisfied, my brain is delighted because he has received something. Perhaps we are not delighted because jealousy is influencing me. So if you want to be generous, and generous, being generous is the pathway towards great man, towards great life. It is a great aid towards great life. So generosity is to find one's own satisfaction in the satisfaction of others. In the satisfaction of others. So now what I have I have decided, I will discuss today another one principle. And remaining three will be discussed tomorrow. Because, because one hour it is not possible to discuss all things all six qualities within within one single session. So I have already discussed two courage and generosity. Now I will discuss third one and remaining three will be taken up tomorrow. Along with I will give some tips of the secret of eternal end. So we all in humanity we want to remain eternally in. And for that what we do we go to the beauty parlors. But beauty parlor cannot keep us eternally mute. Secrets lies, secret lies in, lies in something else. So I will be dealing with, I will be dealing with secret of eternal youth. Because it is also an universal view. Not confined to India, not confined to Duel, not confined to past not confined only to present, but it is, it is eternally valid. It is eternally valid. That is why it is also an universal human values. I will be, so tomorrow I will take up three principles of perfection or three values of success, three universal values, and the secret of eternal youth. Sasvato jikonar, sasvato jikonar gopan Secret of eternal youth. How one can be, one can remain youth even at the age of life. Because mother says, it's a beautiful, it will, it will surprise you. Mother says, I have found old of 20 years and I have found young of 70 years. What does it mean? I have found found young of 70 years and I am found old of 20 years, then what is the secret of eternal youth? So tomorrow I will, take up, I will be taking up the secret of eternal youth as well as remaining three universal values. So now let me conclude the third one and it is third one. Not only, not only a great value in my opinion, it is the driving force. It is the driving force. Only with this attitude you can overcome all problems of the world. All problems of the world. Even in your technical papers also. And what is that? The second G of the pain is gaze. First G, I have discussed generosity. And this from Supreme Court's court C, courage. And now the second G. Second G is the sense of gratitude. Gratefulness. Gratitude. What does it mean? But the gratitude means, gratitude means being appropriately born thankful. Being appropriately or thankful, when you are appropriately and thankful for whom? For the benefits received every day. Of 
after the end of the class, the these are these are these things. You should have the sense of gratitude for your own things, because you have to receive something. You have gained something. So, what is gratitude? Gratitude means being appropriative or thankful for the benefits received every day, every day. It means being thankful to family, thankful to good people, relationship, and happiness. This is what is called gratitude, gratefulness. So, what are you? What for are you grateful in your life? What for? What for? So, practicing gratitude. How one can practice gratitude? One can practice gratitude. Number one, gratitude is not something that happens by itself. It does not happen itself. Then how it will happen? It will have to be practiced. It will have to be inculcated. It will have to be pursued. It does not happen automatically. So gratitude is not something that happens by itself. We need to cultivate it constantly. We need to cultivate it constantly until it becomes spontaneous. So this sense of gratefulness has to become spontaneous in our attitude. And until that, we have to continue with our practice, with our effort, because it does not happen. It, because it does not happen by itself. So how you practice? Then again from the lowest rung to the highest. Lowest rung to the highest. How you can begin? Say ten at least. So gratefulness should begin with, with saying ten. Thanks, thankfulness needs to be transformed into gratitude. Thanks is the primary word, preliminary thing, preliminary attitude. Gratefulness is the highest one. So say thank you. Thank you at least a few times in. Just practice. Just, just take the opportunity. How you can at least in a day you should have the opportunity to thank you, thank you, thank you. You should, you should be in search of opportunities so that you can utter these two words. Thank you. So say thank you at least a few times a day for what you receive. You have received food, you have received light, you have received air from Nasser. So say thank to Nasser. Thanks to Nasser. So, because in a particular way, you are receiving so many things, but you are not thankful for them. So you are a miser. So you are a narrow man. We can't be narrow, because narrowness is there. Expansion is life. So, at least you should say thank you, maybe in one It does not mean that every time you, you should utter it explicitly. Even you can utter it implicitly. Even you can utter it inwardly. Thank you, Nasser. You have, you are sustaining my life by giving oxygen to me. You have, you have given me oxygen for today. And I am really thankful to you. Number two, once in a while, think of all the things to be grateful. Once in a while, once in a week or once in a while, you just, just imagine, these are the least. I should be grateful for all these things. At least once in a week, you should have five minutes time, five minutes time to think of all the things to be grateful for. You should have a list at least once in a week for five minutes. Then, nerves are crazy. Nurse are crazy and overlook trains minor faults. This will develop gratefulness in you. You should neglect the minor faults of your brain. You should neglect, you should overlook. Then number two, four, what's read inspiring positive stories? 
works and read positive, inspiring stories, avoid negativity. Avoid negativity, read inspiring stories. Then, compliment your friends and family whenever possible. And there will be many occasions in your life Whenever you get such opportunity, whenever you get such opportunity, compliment your family members. Compliment your family members and compliment your friends. Go out of your way and help family members and teachers. So go out of your way in order to help your family members and for your teachers. Go out of way. Going out of way. This will, this will cultivate, this will inculcate the sense of gratitudeness in you. And then, learn to say sorry. Learn to say sorry whenever you have caused inconvenience to others. Suppose, unwillingly or mistakenly, you have caused inconvenience to somebody else. You should have the courage to say sorry. This will inculcate sense of gratefulness in you. And then you have to differentiate between gratitude and ego. What is ego? Ego is nothing but my eye sense. Eye sense. This eye is called ego. Eye is called ego. This narrowness is called ego. This separative consciousness. I am the God of Isha Sarva. I am not Mughal Bora. I am a separate entity. I am a separate entity. This separated consciousness, the consciousness which has separated me from the whole world. Because a consciousness is constantly working on me to separate me from the whole world. And that's why our ancient disease. We are uttering Vasudhoi Bhagutumbakam. Whole world is my relative. Vasudhoi Bhagutumbakam. So what is ego? This separated consciousness. Which has separated me from the entire world. And who has separated me? My eyes. The eyes. So, can anything take away this feeling of gratitude? So you have already inculcated a a good, a good portion of gratefulness in you. Who can take it away from you? Mother says it is only, only ego has the capacity to take it away from you, and nobody else. Ego is such a dangerous thing. Ego can take it away from you, whatever you have inculcated. So, just know it. We say yes, ego. It draws us out of our ego. On the contrary, gratitude draws us out from our ego. So if we develop gratefulness, if we develop gratitude, gratitude, then I will be less egoistic. But if I am strongly egoistic, then whatever I am inculcated, whatever gratefulness I am inculcated, it will be taken away by my ego. So that much you have to you have to understand. Then when we have ego, that is a beautiful example. When we have ego and when we are in a state of gratefulness, what is the sign? What is the proof? What is the proof of being in a state of ego? So always think of what we want and do not have today. I want something, something for myself. I am in need of something. And I am not getting it today. If this sense prevails, it implies I am egoist. I am only concerned about what I need. And I am not getting it today. It concerns me. Then I am egoistic, I am narrow, I am selfish. I am only concerned about what I need. What I need, I need, I need. Then you are in a state of egoism. 
Number second, when you are feeling a sense of incompleteness, incompleteness because of this desire, that you want something and you are not getting it. If as a result, you are feeling a sense of incompleteness because your desire is not being fulfilled, then you are in a state of egoism. You are narrow. You are concerned with your with yourself only. It will not lead you to great life. It will lead you to miserable life. This so our source of all misery, our narrowness is the even the spiritually. It is saying even the cause of all physical disease, narrowness is the only cause. Narrowness is the all, only cause, even all physical disease. Narrowness is the cause. Narrowness is such a dangerous element. So feel a sense of it, feel a sense of incompleteness because of this desire, then you are in a state of egoism. After this desire is fulfilled, next desire comes. It's a continuous process. So desire, desire comes, desire is satisfied, next desire comes. We are just, we are just slave to our desire. No end to desire. So repeat this cycle, always worried about ourselves. Then I am in a state of ignorance. On the contrary, what is the sign of gratefulness? What is the sign of gratefulness? Gratefulness is express genuine appreciation of what others have done for us. If somebody has done something for me, I should be appreciative for him. I should be in a, in, in a state of, in such state always, I, am, I should be in such state of mind. So express genuine appreciation of what others have done for us. Number two, Think less of ourselves. When we are thinking less of ourselves, more of others in a positive way, then I am in a state of, state of gratefulness. When we are thinking of ourselves, then I am in a state of fairness. That is to say, I am in a state of egoism. Then feel a sense of pure joy. When? Feel a sense of pure joy. When? When we are filled with gratitude, when you are you are in a state of gratefulness for somebody, you should feel joy in your inner being. Then you are in a real state of gratefulness. So this is the science of ego as well as science of gratefulness. And then, what is the benefit of gratitude? What is the benefit? If I am in a state of gratitude, what is my benefit? First benefit, gratitude makes us positive people. Gratitude makes us positive people, number one. Number two, gives us joy. Number three, gives us happiness. Then, gratitude helps us forgive others more easily. Then, we are in a state of forgiving others more easily. If we are in a state of gratefulness. Then, Next then, gratitude helps reduce negativity. Gratitude helps reduce negativity and makes life pleasant. Makes life pleasant. Next benefit, gratitude brings humility. Pinocrata, humility. Gratitude brings humility. It is a sure cure for egoism. If we are to cure our egoism, then we have to inculcate the sense of gratefulness. Gratitude. And then gratitude improves all relationships. Entire world is right now facing relationship crisis. This is the greatest tragedy of our time. And it is because of our narrowness, because of our egoism, because of our contraction. So gratitude improves all relationships, friendship, relative, etc., etc. And then gratitude makes us better people.
gratitude makes us better people. Then, then what is gratitude? So, what is the Mahamantra of, of the gratitude? Be thankful. Be in a state of thankfulness all the time, all the moment. Be in a state of thankfulness. Because you are occasion for being thankful in, a, in every moment. Because in every moment you are receiving air from the nature. Otherwise, you, you would not have lived. So, we have the occasion to remain in a state of gratefulness at the moment. Because without air from oxygen, air, air from nature, we can't even exist for a moment. In spite of our money, power, pain, career. And we should be in a state of gratefulness. So, so, let us, so let us, so let us begin our journey from, from, from this moment, from this very moment, from this very moment, everyone is my teacher. So how you can, how you can begin your sense of gratefulness? By singing a song. What is the song? Everyone is my teacher. Everyone is my teacher. Some I see, some I see, some I subconsciously have trust. Some I subconsciously have trust. Often I learn simply by observing others. Often I learn simply observing others. Some may be completely unaware that I am learning from them. In many occasions you will, you will experience, you will, you will come across with many occasions in your life that you are giving something from somebody, but that happens is completely unaware. In my life, I was inspired by many, but they have forgotten what they have told me. What they have told me, but I still remember. I still remember. So some may be completely unaware that I am learning from them, yet I bow deeply in gratitude. They may not be aware that I am taking something from him, but I should bow, I should bow silently in a, in a state of gratitude. So the last word, the mother says, then what is gratitude? There is no better cure for him. There is no better cure for equity than a happy gratefulness. And with this explanation of three great human values, let me conclude for today. And tomorrow, tomorrow I will be taking up the remaining three values as well as the secret of eternal youth. But let me conclude with three quotations, three things. Though at present, though at present, This is the era of competition. We, we may not be aware, but we are, we are, we are heading towards complete, complete collaboration. From competitiveness to collaboration, we know that because we are children of the past, possessor of the present, but the creator of the future says Sri Tanavinda. Past is only our foundation. Present is our material. Future is our goal and strength. We are heading towards collaboration from the age of competition. We are heading towards synthesis from the age of analysis. We are heading towards synthesis from the age of analysis. Analysis is not not the future. Synthesis is the future. Collaboration is the future. Not the competition is the future. Protest of Italy is the hoy. Hohoj of Italy is the Bislehon is the hoy. Hongslehon is the And this is not the era of conflict. Though apparently it is the era of conflict, we are heading towards cooperation. So from conflict, we are heading towards cooperation. And this thing was beautifully uttered in Upanishads. Asatoma Satgamayam, Tamasoma Zhuti Gamayam, Brit 
told about all the people that Thank you. Namaskar to all and my gratitude to all of you. Thank you.